Are you ready to scale and outsource your business? Okay, let's go. Welcome to the Outsourcing and Scaling Show. I'm your host, Nathan Hirsch, a show where we talk about everything Amazon, Shopify, e-commerce, and digital marketing. Let's get started. Welcome back to Outsourcing and Scaling. Today, I have a very special guest, Brendan Morris. Brendan, how are you doing? Good, man. Bright and early in the morning over here. <laughs> We're excited to talk to you. Um, Brendan is an Amazon private label expert. In just three years, he went from working a nine to five job to selling his Amazon business for an eight figure exit and continues his brand empire with the hope of one day for a nine figure exit. Utilizing his intimate knowledge of Amazon listing optimization, ranking and automation as co-founder for the leading Amazon software seller tools, which is focused on helping private label sellers be successful Quite an impressive, res- impressive resume, and I want to talk a, a little bit about selling Amazon and, and all of that, but first, take us back before Amazon, before the nine to five, what kind of kid were you growing up? Were you a straight A student? Were you a, a rebel? Did you know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Oh, yeah. I, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, I first started off uh, cutting lawns at five bucks a lawn, you know, five bucks for the front, five bucks for the back. So, I'd push my lawnmower down the street, making some money over the summer. Um, so it always was in my blood. It was always was something I wanted to do. Uh, did, you, did you go to high school? Did you go to college? Yeah, I went, I went to high school and, uh, I, DC student. It just didn't excite me. Um, then finally went to college, uh, which just with a community college. Um, and it was just completely bored. And so I, I started getting distracted by video games and I got kicked out of college three times. Um, and then, so I had to write a letter to the Dean to get accepted back in. So he let me back in. And I stayed for maybe two months and that was it. So I college, definitely a college dropout. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what was your nine to five job and how come you went that route instead of just becoming an entrepreneur right away? Yeah. So I first started off in just retail. I was just a, a grocery guy working in a retail store, stocking shelves. Um, then I knew, you know, my passion was always computers. So I went into the IT world, um, spent five years as IT project manager and I kept asking for a raise. So I was only getting... Um, I was only getting $20 an hour. So I said, I want to raise, I want to raise. So it was $20 an hour for five years. And they asked me, how much do you want? I said, I want a hundred percent raise. I want to go from 20 to $40 an hour. And they said, okay, we'll see what we can do. And they can't, a year goes by. They finally come back and say, Hey, guess what? We got your raise. Oh, this is going to be good. You know, I'm going to go from 40 K a year to 80 K to 80 a year. You know, this is my dream. And they came back with me with five bucks. Ooh. And so right then and there, I was like, I need something else. So that's when uh, I started in the candy portion of Amazon, started selling candy. So how'd you come across Amazon originally and what was Amazon like back then? So that was uh, October of 2013. Uh, My parents make peanut brittle every year for Christmas. And that's a candy confection and everyone raves how good it is. So I was like, you know what, maybe I should just throw it online uh, on Amazon and see what happens. So it was one photo, it was like $25 for this peanut brittle and it instantly sold. So then I had to go in the kitchen and start making the peanut brittle. (laughs) So I started making the peanut brittle. And uh, so we did about 300 units that, uh, that Christmas all made by hand in the kitchen, my girlfriend and I, and uh, that was end of December, 2013. And then starting January, I said, okay, no more. Something that's heavy, something that breaks, something that expires, something you just, don't want to do that anymore. So that's when I got into supplements of January of 2014. So, so how did you even get started? Did you take a course? Was it just trial and error? So, um, so no course trial and error in the beginning. Um, 2014, I started selling supplements. I was in the testosterone space and then Ryan Moran just mentioned me out of the blue said, Hey, I'm a competitor of yours. You're a competitor of mine. Can we just keep the space clean? And then we just started talking. And then he asked me what, uh, if I was an ASM or I said, what is ASM? And so I immediately went out and bought it. Um, so I guess, well, I don't even confess. So I pirated ASM2 <laughs> and then, and then I, I bought ASM3 because uh, okay. something was missing. And what was missing was the people. So I got the knowledge from the pirate, but uh, I definitely wanted to pay for it and uh, meet the people. Got it. So you, you got this business off the ground. You're in supplements. You, you meet Ryan, you take ASM. I'm assuming you, you weren't just solo at that point. Were you, were you hiring people? Who was your first hire? It was just me. It was just me. I mean, I, I knew that this is, once you learn what lever you have to pull, you just keep pulling it. 
it's like, this is what is working. Like, don't distract yourself with everything else with, you know, social media and, and, and for at the time was, was offsite traffic. You didn't need it at the time. Um, so I just kept pulling that lever and it wasn't until, uh, 2015, I had my first hire. So it was a full year. So I generated, I started selling supplements September of 2014. I quit my day job. And then uh, 2015, I had my first hire. But so um, what was the hire for? Who was it? What did he do? Uh, so it, it was a girl and she, and she was more of like an IT project manager. Uh, she came from the, uh, um, uh, the MLM space. She was, so I always say she was kind of a entrepreneur. Uh, okay. It's kind of direction. Um, she was a great hire. It was kind of a, like a, an all arounder kind of replacement of me, you know, customer service, inbound inventory, um, all that good stuff that kind of lets you focus on other things. Did you scale a bigger team or did you keep it small like that? Just you and her? No, no. You know what? Out of all my brands I have right now, even the ones doing, you know, a million a month or even more than that, or even less than that too. Um, honestly, it's, it's just one person uh, per brand and everything is automated. Everything's automated from even responding to seller feedback to inbound inventory, completely automated. Like I don't even uh, create shipping labels, um, completely automated. Um, ranking, reviews, everything's automated, man. So that's, that's where 2019 is going. Right. I hear you. So you, you had this eight figure exit, bridge the gap a little bit. Was it straight up to, to selling it success? Were there errors along the way and any big mistakes that, that stood out? Oh my God. The, honestly, the reason I sold was, was depression and anxiety. Honestly, I'll be like, I was so stressed. Like during that time, uh, Amazon went through a huge review wipe in 2015. So I went from 70 reviews to zero. Um, so I remember waking up at night, like I, ah, this sucks. Um, you know, I quit my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then I just, you know, got over my depression in a couple of days and just went back into it. Um, but it, it was just another review wipe. And then the PQ team came out and they were shutting down one of my ASINs, you know, two or three a week. Um, so just consistently getting shut down. And I knew Amazon, there was going to be a big review wipe and it actually happened. So I wanted to leave because I thought this gravy training was going to end. So I sold and closed on a Friday and then on Saturday, Amazon did the review wipe. Wow. Yeah. After I closed, it was, it was like the perfect timing. So, so walk us through that process of selling a business. I mean, I'd never sold a business before. I'm sure our listeners either haven't, or maybe they have, but they, they want to at some point, that's the ultimate goal. What was that process like? How long did it take? Give people a peek on the inside. Yeah. Uh, long process, a lot of due diligence. Um, the due diligence isn't difficult because if you know everything about your business, then it's just more like putting the pieces together. And I use Dropbox and it was just consistently putting documents in there. Um, I mean, at one point they literally wanted a screenshot of every single review. I mean, they, they just, it was crazy. So, um, it was January of 2016 and I called up my tax guy and I said, Hey, I think I want to sell what do I have to do. He said, get the hell out of California. <laughs> because it's 13.3% income tax just in California. Right. Um, so I immediately, that very next weekend, uh, my wife and I moved across the border to Nevada and uh, we immediately established residency, which is very easy to do. It's more like a checklist. Um, you know, get rid of your home in California, get rid of your dentist, get rid of your library card, et cetera, et cetera, and then open those up in Nevada. As soon as that happens, you can do it in a weekend. Um, and then that was, I think it was February by the time I moved. Um, and then we closed in October. So it was, um, it was a long process and it was always consistently delayed because they really didn't know uh, much about Amazon in terms of like the optimization. And so they, the listings went to FDA approval or FDA compliance. And then they noticed some wording that they didn't like. So we had to remove that. We had to wait for rankings to shift or move or change. And the, but finally the day came and a big fat wire came in and uh, you know, it was a good feeling. Good for feeling. sure. And I've actually, I, this guy, Jason, who I had on a different podcast, Jason Swank, who sold his agency, he actually talked about after he sold it, he, he almost went into depression because he didn't know what to do. He missed the people that were in the business. Obviously, you didn't have as many people, but he had a whole team. Talk to us about that, that after effect and, and what you went through to figure out what you wanted to do next. Yeah. Yeah, completely. So people often ask me, like, how did you get rid of your, your baby? Like, I, I never viewed it as my baby. I'm not big into supplements. Um, to me, 
the people that are successful, I mean, this is going to be sound a little weird, but most people that are successful don't really care about what they, what they sell. It seems to be we're internet marketers that happen to sell this. Right. Internet marketers that happen to sell supplements or cookies or whatever you're selling. Um, so when you take that approach, you kind of take the emotion out of it. And so I didn't really care about that part of the business, but what I definitely cared about was it's more of your identity because it's the people, it's the flights, it's the conventions, it's, it's those monthly or biweekly paychecks for, you know, 300, 400 grand in your bank account. Right. Um, and then when that all vanishes, it, it, it's a shock. It's a shock. And, uh, you know, man, to be honest, I went through, I went through therapy, man. I had to get through it. Really? And, uh, it, I came out the other side with, with a brand new goal and, and intentions. And, um, it's not easy, put it that way. So, so what was next? Do you start seller tools? How many years after? Mm, no, I, I started seller tools in, in August of 2014 for myself. Got um, like I said, I'm, I'm huge in automation, huge in automation. Everything is automated. Um, Q rankings, BSRs, bestseller badges, title changes, category changes, seller feedback, review, uh, generation, everything's automated. Um, like I said, even inbound inventory, like create shipment, create labels, pallet labels, you know, it all is automated. Um, so I created seller tools for that purpose of automating my business because I could rely on honestly software over people, which so I, go ahead. Yeah. So when did that, when did you open that out to the public or were you already doing that before you sold it? That in itself was huge. So I started it with a, a Pakistan team in 2014. Um, wasn't going in the direction I wanted to. So then I started with a Filipino team uh, after that. Um, and then I moved to, that failed. So I went to American team. I said, look, I'm going to get the Michael Jordan. You know, he alone was going to run the team. He was 300 grand a year. And he alone. So I was like, I want the best of the best. I was a, in the U.S. Completely failed completely failed. Uh, so then I got this new team, uh, that's over in Europe. And so it took four different teams and, and major issues. So when did we go to public? We went to public four different times, <laughs> but this iteration was uh, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Talk to me about working with developers. Cause I've worked with developers. I fired a ton of developers. I, do you code or no? Uh, like I'm more like a script kitty. Like I got can it. see it, edit it, use it, but that's it. Got it. So I don't code at all. So it was a huge learning curve hiring my first developer. We built our own software for our Amazon business. It was okay. Definitely not something we'd go to market. And then with free up, like all the back end is all built by our developers. And we went through a bunch of them too, before we figured out that right team. What did all you right. learn from dealing with developers and what advice would you give to people out there that are hiring developers for maybe the first time? Yeah. Uh, completely think out your idea uh, to the fact that you have documentation, whiteboarding, wireframing, because the dev thinks in code, not visual. Um, they are probably the worst in terms of design um, or, or artistry. Um, it will always take you four times as long and four, much, four times as much cash. So if someone quotes you on 5K for the project, it's going to be 20K. Um, and if they quote you on a month, it's going to be four months for sure. So completely patient, have enough cash, explain your ideas as well as you can. Uh, to even that a uh, second grader could understand just because he, the person thinks differently um, and, and have lots of patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Well, what about your, your take on, on just sprints and bugs and, and do you have a certain process that you go through it and have it repetitive or does it depend on what you're trying to add and does that change over time? Yeah, it definitely changes over time. So, I mean, we use Jira. Um, I, I'm lucky that my business partner in that is not only an Amazon seller, but also is the, the manager of the entire project. So he knows coding, he knows project management. Um, he knows all the sprints and the milestones. Um, so he definitely kind of lays it all out for the, for the, for the team. And it's consistently changing. You know, we'll, we will develop a idea or a feature that we want to roll out. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, checking review status breaks or search volume is no longer there. And then we have to completely change and, and fix things. Um, right. So it's consistently being delayed. Yeah, I, I've had that, that same experience. And right now I gave it to my business partner, Connor, who has a, a slightly different compliment to, to my skills and he handles the developers much better than I do. Let's talk about having a business partner. I mean, have you had any bad experience with business partners? How do you find your business partner now? And, and, and how do you have that great relationship? You always hear these horror stories of business partners splitting up and how do you keep it civil and keep that good relationship going forward? Yeah, business partners um, just 
it needs to be the opposite of you. Like very, very rarely that I, that I think it can happen. But what I've noticed is that if you go find another ASMR and you guys are like, okay, I'm an ASMR, you're an ASMR, let's do this together. Um, it can work, but you guys definitely don't complement each other is, is my point. So um, one of my best business partners, he's complete opposite of me. He's, he's detail oriented. He's anal. He's, he's um, just, he's, he's awesome. And he was my ex boss at my last job. Really? And so I just knew that that fit w was right then and there. Um, so it, it definitely would be, you need to find someone that with opposite skill set. Because if you guys complement each other, then, then you guys are just going to be one-sided and way to one side. Um, you need people that think completely different than you. And uh, even Troy with Seller Tools, I mean, he thinks completely opposite the way I do. And, and so he has a different perspective, a different conversation. Um, even the language he uses is, is, you know, I like to speak in bullet points. And he likes to speak in... Uh, I like, I like to call it corporate doc. <laughs> I, I love it. So let's say someone's listening out there and they, they built the business, they got it to a million or 2 million and they want to get it to, to 10, 10 million, eight figures. What advice do you have that, that might be different from that startup to get from zero to one to get from one to 10? Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's replace yourself. Um, your asset is, is the way you think. It's the way that you want to build your business. It's a new perspective. People don't think like an entrepreneur, especially a successful entrepreneur. Um, ooh, power's going crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, people don't, do not think like an entrepreneur. So it definitely is you have to replace yourself in terms of definitely the daily tasks, uh, whether it, that's like using something like, like free up, absolutely, uh, in order to, to you know, get someone to do the customer service or the inventory control um, or, or, or you know, whatever it may be. Or for me, I like, I like automation. Um, I, like, I like, you know, the computer doing the work for me. Uh, but either way, you need to take yourself out of the business. If you're finding yourself clicking a lot, then you need to stop clicking. I like that. Click less as you get Click bigger. Less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. We really appreciate you coming on. This was some great insight from someone who's been there and sold a big business. Where can people find out more about you? What do you have exciting coming up that you want people to know about? Yeah, honestly, the thing that I share the most, because I'm pretty private with my brands nowadays, um, is, is Seller.Tools, just because we, we built the software for, for Amazon sellers. It really is, is some, a lot of the things that I develop in Seller Tools is stuff that I want. You know, we just released the API, which means you could literally do anything you want with your Amazon data. And let me just walk you through like a couple scenarios. It could be something as simple as, um, let's just say your keyword ranking drops from one to five, let's just say. And you can immediately trigger a many chat broadcast to 20 people and immediately get sales on that particular keyword with, before you even wake up. Or maybe it's a bestseller badge. If you drop and lose your bestseller badge, completely automate that and get yourself back up to the top. Or it's it's uh, customer service where they have a, a conversation with themselves. They 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 troubleshoot themselves. They uh, send themselves an MCF order by themselves. Um, it's really about that automation and letting either the computer do it, a VA do it, or the customer uh, do their own uh, work for them. And so that's what I would say is it, it's helping me scale is definitely automation. Um, and if you guys do want to find me, I'm always in, in seller.tools. Uh, we have a Facebook group called FBA Kings. And if you want to shoot me an email direct, it's brendan at seller.tools. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. And yeah, have a great rest of the week. Hi, right, man. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Did you enjoy this content? If so, click like, leave us a comment and subscribe to our channel so we can continue bringing you great content all about hiring.